What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight's baseball slate. And I just want to remind everybody, I will be live. At, we will be live at 6 Eastern. And I'm going to talk some basketball and go back and forth on that as well, because we do have the final starting with some big tournaments going. And uh, I guess my main hint is going to be Bielitsa for the series. But we'll see. We'll see if he even plays a minute. He might play zero minutes. And I will just double down on it next time. <laughs> I'm just going to bet on this guy's over every game. Um, anyway, we'll get into the, to the MLB. It's a smaller slate. So it's certainly manageable. Um, Sheets, any sort of overall things other than the fact that Atlanta is supposed to score 7,000 runs? No, except there's a, you know, a little weather concern. There's a big weather concern in one game, and uh, we'll have to deal with that. And that's, that's, that's a nine-run team total as well. It's probably the second highest team total on the slate. Um, so we got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sharing my screen. Very, very fishy pitching. And a lot of – so let's, let's see if we can't figure it out. You really use up your crowns, I noticed. I'm just going to throw out one quick funny thing. You, you definitely use your crowns, don't you? Yeah. Oh, I'm up to almost a million of them. Why? Because you actually start getting different bonuses and stuff from DraftKings if you have like a million of them. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me share, let me share a little life experience with you that you, that you probably, you had a little bit of, okay? When, yeah. when, when, when poker stars went down, okay? There were FPPs oh my God. uncashed yeah. for worth billions of dollars. Okay. Saved and eventually maybe people got them back. Maybe they didn't. I once had a credit card that had 80 million points, whatever it was. And the <laughs> credit card got 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 the credit card account got closed without letting me know that by the way, if your credit card account gets closed, all those points disappear off the face of the earth. Okay. Oh I also once had a very, very smart person who was on the other side of this phone call. One say to me, listen, whatever I cash for something on, on, on DraftKings or whatever, I just, just withdraw it all. Withdraw. I want to keep a minimum, as minimum balance as possible. And the fact is, I want the least amount of equity in someone else's hands than me, um, as there is. So whenever they give me the first option to pay with crowns, I always pay with crowns. And look, if, if I'm giving up something by not letting it accumulate and you get the extra triple, quadruple bonus, that's fine with me. So uh, that's my philosophy. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. Um, I, I just I, I do it with the fine with the money side of it, but I don't do it with the with the crown side of it. I'm at least I'm not. I'm trying not to. I, I, I use them at the end of the year because that's what uh, generally tax wise I've been advised to do. Okay. Um, anyway, all right. Well, we, we but uh, but yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, this is unfortunately the first game is is the, is the weather concern and. Sheets, you know my thing. If Jordan Lyles is pitching, there's a good chance I'm stacking the other side of that game. <laughs> um, I really like this game, and I am frustrated. Like Lyles is a guy who, you know, he can give he gives up a lot of hard contact. He gives up a lot of home runs. He's actually had some really good outings this year as well. But I I would be very very into stacking uh, Seattle. Uh, sorry, uh, Baltz, yeah, Seattle especially. And I'm not against a Baltimore mini stack any night, although last night was their, their explosion game. So maybe this is the time you, you, you decide to play a, a really low owned uh, flexin and uh, oh, sorry, not a really low owned, a really cheap flexin. He'll be owned. Um, so I'm sort of, you know, that that's where I'm at in this game is sort of a little bit of flexin interest and a lot of Seattle interest. How about you? Yeah. Um, I agree with that. I think Seattle is probably one of the, more obvious pivots or complementary stacks to Atlanta. Um, and I don't disagree with that. I also don't disagree with the supposition that this game is in a lot of danger of not playing. Um, at least it's an early game. Um, so you'll at least hopefully have some kind of clarity. And just a, not based on projections or anything like that, because honestly, no, no pitchers projecting well today. Um, I, I would totally have no problem having flex into 6,200 if this game goes um, with, with Baltimore coming off the Ray pummeling. Um, so again, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a huge stand on it, especially with weather concerns, but at 6,200, I mean, he's just, I mean, really, I think he's just as good as a lot of these other, other bad options. So um, I think I agree with what you said, a little bit of flex in and definitely Seattle if the game. Goes. Yep. Um, so, so we're same page here. Um, all right, let's move over to, LA and the Yankees if this game I don't even know what to expect I feel like I, I'm, I'm counting on you for this and I don't know what to do with it I don't know I, th I think this one plays 
even if this one plays though, there's a chance that you don't have a lineup by the time right. that the delay right. is. So this is actually on a small slate, probably something you can get very strategic with. Also really dangerous, but um, <clears throat> at the same time, like, I don't think that people are exactly dying to, I mean, we don't even know. It's, it's, I thought Otani and Cortez is who I've got, but I feel like they, I thought they were supposed to play the first, start the first They game. are. So I don't know who's even pitching yet. I have Talion and Detmers. Yeah, I think that that's that's reasonable. Um, I actually thought, you know, and Detmers was supposed to start yesterday, and blah, blah, blah. But like, I, I mean, the one thing is, if it does play, <clears throat> one thing, you're, you're getting Otani at a cheap, pr cheaper price. At the same time, I would have no problem stacking the Yankees here if I if I knew what the, if I had any idea. And maybe it's good that I don't have an idea because I don't think anybody's playing the Yankees. It's a six game slate that, that, that feels like it's going to play very small. You have, you know, in spite of the fact that the weather is a little bit rough, you do have like, it, it's hot there, right? Like it's, it's, or warmish at 70 degrees. Um, so it's decent hitting weather in Yankee stadium always. Um, I, I think that this is a, this is a spot where I could stack the Yankees blindly almost and just hope my guys get in, I guess, because I don't know if we're going to have a starting lineup before this game starts. I really don't. Well, I will tell you this. Otani is not pitching the game too, because he's pitching right now. Okay. There you go. So Detmer's. <laughs> then you're going to, then you might have some, you're going to have some ownership on the Yankees, but I still don't know how, how people are going to do it without knowing who's exactly going to play. So it's a high risk, you know, high risk, very high reward. It's a small slate. Um, you know, we have two, we have weather concerns in the other game too. So it could turn into even, even smaller slate. I, I I'm sort of into the idea of, of the Yankees here, just, you know, stack and pray kind of a thing that your guys get in the right spot. And that's what I would do. And, and maybe, you know, Otani is an awesome one-off in Yankee Stadium. I mean, literally, if the guy played in Yankee Stadium, he probably had 50 home runs. Yep. Um, so that's what I've got for this. What do you What do you got? Yeah, uh, Talion. I, I just I can't do it at 9200. Um, I mean, I guess I could, but I mean, um, everything's on the table in this slate, right? Like, everything is on the table. Um, watch for the lineup. Watch to see who's playing. Watch to see where they're hitting and all this stuff. Um, but I, I think that my my inclination is to just fade it. Mm -hmm. um, but but I'll 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 revisit. But right now I'm on I'm on fade patrol for that game. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's the general thing I think that's going to happen, and that's the only reason I mentioned the Yankees. Yeah. And, and and the other game too. I mean, just that there's there's really there's definitely some serious weather concerns, but there's at the same time like you have massive upside on a lineup. I mean. Detmers as you like he threw a threw a no hitter this year, but at the same time, you've got the Yankees. You put you put a lefty against the Yankees. It just feels like even without yeah. Stanton, you're still asking for some trouble. And Judge is too cheap. And um, I, I'm I'm sort of if this game gets the weather go ahead, I think too early, people are gonna be on it. But if not, they will be if they're very concerned, people will be off of it. And this is the kind of time where I would probably take that stance and and try to try to gamble a little bit on the Yankees if I uh, if if I feel like if there's nothing else that I like better. Um, Cause we're going to have massive chalk in the Colorado game. <laughs> um, all right. San Diego, Milwaukee, um, Manaya and Hauser sheets. What are you doing with this one? Yeah. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be completely narrative driven and, and completely bias driven. Um, uh, one uh, GPP I won this year. I had with the freaking worst team in baseball. Um, uh, just basically just teeing off on freaking Hauser, that being the Reds. So I'll go right back to that, uh, to that idea and probably just, just stand with San Diego. Uh, that'll be my, uh, that'll be my, my take going into this slate is to just go San Diego against Hauser. Hope they're not owned as much as some of these other uh, more obvious pivots, maybe. And maybe that's, uh, that's what I, that's what I've calculated before we went on air, you know, when I was yeah. still going through this and that's where I'm probably going to be. Uh, Manaya is projecting to be, you know, the, the, the highest projected, guy he's no lock either though i have to say yeah. um but i mean given where he is on the slate relative to everybody else i guess he's the i don't even want to word safest but i guess he's the most likely result to to get the most fantasy points um so mm -hmm. i guess you got to use him um but i'm I, I think san diego is a good place to start on this slate actually Yes, I, I actually we're totally in agreement on this. Um, I don't know that I necessarily want to fully stack them because again, I always say that Milwaukee, good bullpen, Hauser's a good good enough pitcher. 
I'm just going to point out that maybe we finally got, maybe we're getting the actual Trent Grisham I expected. I, I, I mistakenly so far this year have, have called a, Trent, a big Trent Grisham year. He's been terrible, um, but he's homered in two of his last four games. Massive power. He's 2,300 on DK. Um, Luke Voigt is 2,800. I'm just going to bet on the overall talent when these guys get to these ridiculous prices. So uh, even if I don't fully stack them, I could see like a Grisham Voigt, Machado like mini stack or something like that um that's probably what I'd be looking at and I actually think that there's a really good argument if you're not playing Manaya, who is definitely I think sort of stands out a little bit as the top pitcher on the slate um I think that you want to play so I mean Manaya gives up tons of power like you know even in this year where he's played pitching well maybe maybe Tyrone Taylor um maybe uh, Andrew McCutcheon uh, Keston Hera, the, the righties I prefer, but even Yelich is going to be low owned. So I'm kind of into the idea of maybe, maybe getting a little Milwaukee too. I, I like this game as a sneaky game to target. I know that I've already said that about the first two games, but those are weather based and yep. really good stacks. I, I just think this, the both sides of this, this hitting is interesting. If you're not playing Manaya. having said that Manaya does seem like the likeliest result to get you at least 15 to 25, somewhere in that range. Yeah. And uh, that's probably good enough on this on this particular slate. So, uh, but if you're not playing him, I would I would encourage you to at least take some some bats. And probably my number one would be uh, McCutcheon, and my number two would be Taylor if I had to pick two from Milwaukee. All right. So who is M. Libertori? So uh, another uh, high level prospect who has started to get a little bit of his, his feet wet, had a really good outing against Milwaukee last time he pitched. Um, he's got good stuff. I could see the argument of how that could go multiple different ways. This is a, a talented uh, roster, but you do have a little bit of wind blowing in, not much, um, but it's also uh, 67 degrees in Chicago. You know, we had Chicago's weather, man. I don't even know how people do it. It's like 90 degrees one day and there's 25 <laughs> mile an hour winds. And the next day it's, no wind and 50 degrees. It just seems like it's all over the place. But uh, but yeah, I, I could see the argument. I mean, it, first of all, it's 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 just anybody facing the Cubs is always going to be in play. At the same time, I, I this is another one I can make an argument for stacking both sides. I think Gorman is going to be really popular because he's way too cheap. He stands out as an obvious cash game type of play mm -hmm. um, at 2600. But I, I don't think. I'm open to the idea of stacking uh, St. Louis and I'm sort of surprised that the early projections have them as low owned as they, they, they are. So that's, I would, I would prefer, especially the few lefties that they have, which is only really Dickerson and Gorman, I guess. Oh, Edmund is a switch hitter, but I think that they're going to, if they're, if they're going to be low owned, I am definitely going to take some shots there against Keegan Thompson and a bad Cubs bullpen uh, for what it's worth though. Keegan Thompson has been fairly adequate. Um, it doesn't scare me at all. I, I do have the Cardinals as one of the teams that I'm considering, but I, so far, I mean, it's a small slate, so I'm sort of considering teams in every game because we're going to have this massive ownership in the uh, Braves game and we'll get in the, the Rockies game, which we'll get to in a minute because I am not as high on that situation as probably most people will be. So I'm going to be um, primarily fading it in my big buy-in tournaments. I, I will have some pieces but it's not going to be my main stacks. And as I always mention to everybody, uh, well, I guess we'll get to that game in just a second, but uh, Gomer is a better pitcher, I think, than he gets credit for, but also has had some just horrific outings. Um, so anyway, uh, but so yeah, I, I have St. Louis as, an, as a team I'm interested in. How about you on this one? I didn't quite get to the Cardinals, but I definitely have interest in the Libertori as um as uh, just some other pitcher, <laughs> he's also, like you said, he's a prospect. So prospects have upside, and I'll take a shot. Um, he's it's been perfectly fine, it's two starts, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Chicago is not great unless you get that you know wind blowing out of Wrigley. I'm not particularly scared of mm -hmm. of, of, of Team Patrick Wisdom, um, and I will I'll take uh, and I, I just definitely in play like pretty much everybody else on this slate. But I actually feel feel as though he's actually a decent player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I totally agree with you. Uh, right now I have the natural like cash game build to me would probably have Manaya and Liberatore, uh, oh, maybe okay. a flex in in there, but I do think that those are the two, two guys who stood out to me, um, at first glance anyway. <clears throat> All right. Let's talk about this Colorado situation. I'm going to mention winds blowing in 
for, uh, you know, only, only a little bit, but it's 69 degrees. And if it's not like extra good hitting weather in Colorado, I find more of a reason to try to get off of it because I think, I mean, on, a, on this kind of a small slate, I just don't know how to be profitable and just stack massive chalk. Um, I do think guys like CJ Crone will be a uh, lower, lower owned than not that they should be, but lower owned than, than maybe people would expect. I think Connor Joe will be a little bit lower owned. I think Brendan Rogers, depending on how the lineup shakes out, will be low owned. So I, I'm actually, you know, open to the idea. The problem is I still like Ian Anderson as a pitcher, and I still don't think Colorado is a very good hitting team. And I think that there's an argument to be made for Ian Anderson as a pivot off of Liberatory. Um, one, he's a he's already a good pitcher who's a young guy who's fulfilled his some of his potential. He's been way off this year compared to what he was last year, mostly because he's been a little bit wild. But I could see against this Rockies team, him having a decent outing here. So I'm kind of interested a little bit in the uh, in the Ian Anderson. And I'm going to use pieces, but I can't find myself fully stacking a game with this kind of massive chalk on this small of a slate. How about you? Well, first of all, let's you know keep an eye on um, keep an eye on Acuna, see mm-hmm. if he plays or not. Um, okay. These guys are all really cheap, which is why they're going to be really, really low owned. You have Adam Duvall is twenty six hundred. Is that accurate? Accurate? Yeah, probably batting ninth, but still, yeah, it's yeah. Crazy. Um, so, I mean, the way I would I would deal with this is one of two ways. Well, actually, one of three ways. Uh, the and I think all of them are viable. One way is to is to just just say, you know, I don't care. I, I, it's baseball. X out the whole game. You know, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. The second thing you could do is kind of do what 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 you do sometimes is just you know just 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 play one guy or something like that, mm-hmm. or one or two guys, and and don't play like the one two. You know, play like maybe like a two seven or something, or mm-hmm. or just you know and, and play that way. Or the third thing that you can do is, and this is, I think, mandatory, is that if you do, if you do stack Atlanta or stack Colorado or something like, or let's start with Atlanta. If you stack Atlanta, you just can't play Manai like ever. You know what I mean? Like you, you just can't play. You probably can't even play like Liberty, even flexing if he goes. You know what I mean? Like you, you got to do stuff like you got to start with like Taiwan Walker. You know what I mean? Like it's the Dodgers. I mean, you got to really just go. You really have to just punt at pitcher um, to get any kind of reasonable ownership uh, 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 lineup, um, and that's you know that's that's certainly not not advisable. <laughs> but uh, so I'm probably inclined. Uh, listen, uh, it's going to be six o'clock. I don't know if I'm going to be live with you or not. Actually, I won't be. I'm on another call. But if I'm off in time, I'm probably just going to end up exiting it and, mm-hmm. and just you know and just. And look, and you don't you don't have to play Gomber to exit. You know what I mean? You could certainly do that, but I think you know you could just play other other teams. Maybe I hope maybe have San Diego go off. Maybe have the Dodgers go off. You know, just teams that would have a chance to match Atlanta's fantasy point output, and just hope Atlanta scores you know six or something. Right. Like that. I mean, yeah. their team. Listen, listen, their team total. It's not like it's eleven. No, it's it's, it's, it's six. Right. And, and and if they score six. If, okay, I'll tell you this. If you were going to stack Atlanta and I told you they were going to score six runs, would you be happy? I don't know. You know what I mean? So so uh, I'm, I'm probably just going to be inclined to exit. But, I mean, look, they, they do rate to be the best stack, but ownership is going to just swamp them. Yep, um, I agree. And between I expect between the – the weird part is because they, they did lower the prices on the Dodgers, but because of the Dodgers – being lowered, maybe they end up getting a, a higher percentage of the ownership than people are thinking right now. But I would rather just play a better, the better hitting teams. And sometimes I'm, I'm big on weather. Okay. But if, if, the, if you're going to tell me the best hitting team on the slate is going to be one third as owned as, as a team that's, I think, I don't want to say significantly worse, but, but definitely worse. Um, the Dodgers, when they don't play the pirates, at least for some reason, the pirates always, the Dodgers can't seem to do anything against the pirates. But uh, I would rather just play the Dodgers at, at a third of the ownership as my main stack than I would either of these teams. I do want to revisit, though, that I, I want to reemphasize that I do think there's upside for Ian Anderson in this matchup. You have guys from Colorado who will chase and maybe hopefully makes it less likely for, for him to get wild. I'm double checking the projected umpire. We don't have one yet in this game. 
But if you get a, a pitcher's umpire in this game, I would be especially inclined to take a shot with Ian Anderson. And maybe that's the way you would stack Atlanta is if you're going to play Ian Anderson at no ownership with Atlanta. And it also makes sense. You know, we saw it the other night with my boy Kirby. This is what it's really frustrating. Yeah. I keep I keep nailing so many good plays and I just don't have them in the right mix or the right lineups. But I'm I mean, Kirby the other night, you know, after Baltimore scored 13 the night before or whatever it was when he goes up against them and he's, you know, he ends up he's 60. He's just way too cheap. And on, on Fandle, he was four percent owned. And it just I don't know. This is a spot where I could see Ian Anderson having a good game at very, very low ownership. And I think he's talented enough to get through this. Uh, I still think a fairly pedestrian Colorado lineup regardless of what the numbers say. So I, I'm definitely open to Anderson and uh, mo mostly it's just filler pieces. What I might do is like a two, two with these guys and then maybe gamble with a four man stack from the Yankees or a four man stack from Baltimore or, or Seattle or something like that. Um, and then, and, and then also you could, you could play the Dodgers, but I don't, I don't think the Dodgers are going to be as low owned as they're being projected. If the Dodgers are all like 15% or less and some guys like 2%, I would just load up on the Dodgers. Uh, which takes me into that game because I have another weird, I mean, it's a small slate. So you have to talk through every pivot. You have to think about everything. I, I don't like Tywin Walker here. I just don't, let me make this clear. But at the same time, it's 69 degrees as opposed to 80, like it was yesterday in LA. Uh, Tywin Walker is a very boomer bust pitcher. I mean, he just put up, a, he put up 27 in Colorado a couple games ago. Can he really not outscore these other guys? So if you have like, Let's say you did play Atlanta and Colorado. You could play a, a Tywin Walker, Ian Anderson lineup at no ownership, and then you could actually stack Atlanta and Colorado because it, there is, I mean, if you wanted to, because I think there is, there is enough upside for those guys to get you 15 to 20. And that might be good enough. That might be better than any, any pitcher actually does on this slate. So I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility. I also think it's very strange how low owned the Mets are going to be. This is a really good series. The Dodgers are, and, and the Dodgers are probably a little too big of a favorite in this game, but I, I have a ton of interest in the Dodgers and I have interest in Walker as a get weird pivot. Um, for what it's worth, Gonsolin has been awesome. And for some reason, I'm still having trouble clicking that button. <laughs> what do you think about this one? So it's, it's funny, you know, you, uh, the Dodgers do rate to be like the second best, whatever for me uh, stack. So it's personally the natural pivot. Um, I actually like Gonsolin a lot here. Um, I would play him. I, I listen. If he's going to be lower on them, then uh, then uh, I presume he's going to be lower on the Manaya, right? Um, I'll I'll play Gonsolin. I think the Mets have had it easy the last couple of games. I mean, they've played any between Fetty and Corbin, and like you know what I mean. Like, I think they've really had a had had it, had it easy. And now they're cool. They're flying to to LA, you know. And 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 I I I, I think I think that. Uh, I think that the Dodgers are going to do some damage to the Mets in the series. If you want to know the truth, mm -hmm. I'll bring them back to earth a little bit. Um, and by the way, you know, I don't know if we were, we clarified this yesterday or two days ago <laughs> with, with our, our, our baseball plans, but if the Yankees are, are out somehow and, and these guys are in the, in, in the NLCS, like this counts. I mean, we're okay. going to go to these okay. games. You know okay. I mean? Let's do it. I'm in, I'm in yeah. buddy. I'm totally in with that. Yeah. Um, so it's funny that you mentioned um, the, the Dodgers, the only team they can't beat is the Pirates. Um, so I, I, this is this is actually pretty funny. So I remember like it was like it was yesterday um, back. It must have been. I think it was it must have been. I think it was 1988, 1989, where I, I bet actually an actual sports bet on the Dodgers. I laid like two and a half to one against the Pirates. They were at home with Ramon Martinez pitching. OK. And before I even blinked, they were down four nothing and they got crushed. OK. And I'm like, yeah, and, you know, and, 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 and I was going to pull up the that game to just to show you while we were like kind of between games, just to prove that I could just pull that game up. But I forgot exactly when it was. So I just pulled up 1988 Dodgers and I pulled up, you know, games, seven that year. Right, right. Pulled up games versus the right. So I screwed up. I pulled up games versus the Pirates. Right. In 1988. And the first thing I pulled up was, OK lost seven, four to the pirates. So I pulled up the box score, you know, you know who they beat. They beat Hershiser. That game. Oh, wow. Hershiser. Yeah, he was six and all oh going into that game. He ended up only losing a few games all year. And long. against the pirate against the pirates, he gives up seven runs on 12 hits. 
So the Pirates have been killing the Dodgers. That was that was that was the uh, that was it, they've always had trouble with them. But that was a that was a particularly good Pirates team as well with Bond right. Bonilla and all that. Right, um, right, right, right. But uh, uh, yeah, but the, no, this is a, the Dodgers. You get the '88 rematch of the uh, a great seven game series, and we don't have like the Dodgers. It's so frustrating to be a Dodger fan. I mean. <laughs> these guys are literally one of if not the best team they're just certainly the best team right now if, if, if they're one of the three best teams in baseball every single year and yet we have two title or one title since 1988 um it's just it's really crazy but uh this this could be a, a preview of the nlcs here i think it should be a fun series and i really like the uh, I like the Dodgers side of it, but if they stay this low owned, if, if, if it pivots at all and they don't, um, I still think Walker's in play. I know it sounds crazy. I don't like taking pictures against the Dodgers, but again, there's no Muncie there who's always a frustrating, you know, he, that, that guy is like 30 pitches for a pitcher, even if he has, even if he's hitting 180, he, he just works every count, he fouls off a million pitches and he walks all the time. And uh, without him in the lineup, and uh, Bellinger not been himself. Uh, I just think this is like a spot where I could at least be open to the idea of Tywin Walker. But overall, if the Dodgers stay this low owned, I'm absolutely going to load up on the Dodgers. And if they don't, I, I won't. But as of right now, I do have the Dodgers as my number one stack um, based on the current ownership projections. And I think that uh, San Diego and St. Louis are the two other teams that I'm strongly considering. Uh, by the way, how about the rebirth of Paul Goldschmidt? <laughs> um, he's crazy, having- right? It's, he's been unbelievably good. Like, I mean, and actually what's crazy is his per plate appearance is, is incredible because all when he, when he's not getting hits, all he does is walk, you know, he just, yep. he's just always getting you productive points and he's been absolutely incredible. Um, probably not going to, to, to go crazy with, I don't know actually what I'm going to do with the Cardinals, but I am currently planning on playing some Cardinals um, and the Dodgers are my, the Cardinals, Dodgers and Padres are my favorite three except for this is the big caveat, like what happens with the Yankees and that game? Because if people don't play it, I'm going to load up on the Yankees. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. I have all the ownership basically going towards a few bats from Baltimore, a couple bats from Seattle and, and everybody else playing the, the Atlanta Colorado game. And I'm sure it'll change it spread out a little bit. But remember, these are the small slates. It's time to get some, to get weird. I also don't think you need to stack. But if you did, like play the Yankees in a, in a questionable weather game, then you probably should be full stacking because you're gambling on the weather. That's all I would say. Anything, yeah. else, anything else to add? No, I mean, I, I think I'm just going to stick with the Padres. Um, and uh, that'll be my take, I guess. I like it. I mean, look at the Padres prices. It's kind of crazy, right? Like, yep. Luke Voigt at 2,800 when we paid, we literally paid 6,500 for this guy. I remember doing it. And I think he hits two home runs that night as well. So he was nuts for the Yankees two years ago. It hasn't been that long. And you bet on the long-term talent. Look at Goldschmidt coming off of a a rough year for him by his standards. And look who he's been like the best hitter in baseball. Um, So uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. And then pitching wise, I just have, I have Mania is clearly the number one, but I'm very happy to pivot to, to, Gonsolin if I have to, uh, but I think Liberator and Flexen are both guys who pique my interest. So that's where I'm at for pitching right now. All right. All right. Well, good luck, everybody. And we will, I will see you at 6 Eastern and we will talk some NBA as well because it's a small MLB slate. So I'm looking forward to the NBA stuff as well. And uh, good luck today, everybody. Sounds good.